Over the past few years, I've spent an unearthly amount of time not only experimenting with the various but often frustratingly limited customization options offered by iOS, but I've also spent not just days, but probably weeks at this point, creating a bunch of different assets aimed at taking advantage of those various customization options. And given it's been nearly six months since the last iOS setup video I made, I thought it was about time to go back to the drawing board to create a brand new iOS 16 based home screen setup for my iPhone 14 Pro. And so that's exactly what I did. And as you can see, we've got a brand new layout, new widgets, beautiful new wallpapers. And as always, the setup does automatically switch over to a dark mode setup each and every night. My team and I have been working tirelessly to create some amazing new assets for this setup. Plus, I've also designed the entire setup to hopefully be much easier to recreate than most of the previous setups I've featured on the channel. And I've even got a few freebie assets to help get you started. So with that being said, grab a drink, get comfortable, and let's dive in. All right, before we get going, let's just quickly talk about what's involved in recreating this particular setup. Because in past versions of these videos, I often have people complaining that they spent, you know, 20 minutes watching the video and then a good amount of money on some of my assets, only to discover that they also needed to purchase some paid applications to even get the setup working in the first place. So for full disclosure, here are the apps I'll be using for this setup, which are in no particular order, the Clear Spaces application, the Widgie Widget Creator application, the Stock Shortcuts app, and finally Icon Board for creating my custom icons. Now Widgie is available for free, but you can pay for an upgraded version to unlock multiple widget spaces. But the good news is that for this setup, we're only using one widget space, so upgrading is definitely not required. Clear Spaces is a paid application though. It's only a one-off $2 purchase up front. However, there is a free alternative available that offers similar functionality called MD Blank. So if you wanna try that instead, then I'll also link it below. And then Icon Board is free, but to use it how I wanna use it, then it actually becomes the most expensive of the lot, requiring a one-time purchase of $13. But again, there are much cheaper options that offer similar functionality, including transparent app icons, which is what I previously used all the time. And there are even some completely free variants, though they are often quite a bit more finicky. Now, on top of those four apps, I will also be using two paid assets from my own website for the wallpapers and icons. However, once again, you are more than welcome to use your own icons and wallpapers. And so whilst the exact method I'm showcasing in this video won't necessarily be a super cheap one, there are absolutely free methods to achieving a similar setup to what I'm about to show. Okay, with that out of the way, let's now get started on setting up our home screen. First thing I like to do is get my widgets in place. So to do this, I'm gonna long press this page here, then tap this plus icon, and then I'm gonna scroll down and first select a smart stack. I want this one to be a small stack widget so I can tap add widget right away. Then whilst we're still in jiggle mode, I'm gonna long press on that smart stack widget and drag it to a new page. Then I'm gonna tap the page indicator dots down here and uncheck that first page. So we're left with just this single page with our lone smart stack widget. I'll tap on that page and real quick, I'm gonna to tap to open that smart stack widget, then disable widget suggestions. Then I'll tap the plus button, scroll down to the clear spaces widget section and tap to add a small widget. Then I'll tap the plus button again and search for shortcuts, open it and then tap to add it to the stack. Then I'm gonna swipe all the way to the top and start removing all of the other widgets in this stack until we're left with just the clear spaces widget on top and the shortcuts widget below that. Then with that done, I can tap to close that smart stack widget. And again, whilst we're still in jiggle mode, I'll tap the plus icon up here and then come down and tap on the clear spaces widget option. Again, we want another small widget here so I can tap on add widget and there we go. Now we just need one more widget. So again, I'll tap the plus icon, start searching for widget and once it shows up, I'll tap on it. Then I'm gonna scroll all the way over to the large widget section and tap to add a large widget then I'll long press that and drag it to the bottom. And there we go, the basic layout for our home screen is now complete. From there, let's get our wallpaper set up. So as mentioned, for this setup, I'm using wallpapers from my brand new wallpaper pack, which we've just released, and it is called Horizon. 
This is probably the most excited I've been for one of my own wallpaper packs in a very long time. And my team has been working tirelessly to make it the absolute best it could be. And we've ended up with 10 original landscape based designs, which I reckon are just drop dead gorgeous. Now, as I said, there are 10 completely unique designs, but two of the wallpapers have alternate versions available. And so that's actually 12 wallpapers available in total. And what is amazing is that my team have also modified each wallpaper to look absolutely amazing in a widescreen format as well. And there are both 4K and 8K resolution options available to suit just about any and every need. And here's the real kicker. For the first time ever, we've managed to crack the code of having color across the entirety of each wallpaper while still ensuring that each hides the dock on iOS devices. That's right, no more dark gray or white sections down the bottom. Every wallpaper seamlessly blends into the dock without compromising on design. As always, if you're downloading this pack directly to your device, then you'll need to open up the files application and navigate to your downloads folder and then tap to decompress the zip file. Then you can just simply tap the wallpaper you wanna use, which for the light version of this setup is gonna be this one here called Snowy Peaks. So I'll tap on that. Then I'll select the share icon down here and then finally tap on save image. And as mentioned, I'm also using a dark mode wallpaper for when the setup switches to the dark theme at night. And so for that setup, I'm gonna be using this wallpaper here called Hillside Evening. So with that opened, I'll again select the share icon and then tap on save. And with both of my wallpapers saved, I can now come back and open up settings, then scroll down here to the wallpaper section and tap add new wallpaper. I'll then tap on photos, then albums, and then on recent, and I'll select the Snowy Peaks wallpaper that I just saved. Then I can tap on add, and before I hit set, I'll need to tap on customize home screen, and all I'm gonna do here is deselect this blur option, then I'll tap on done. With that said, I can come back home, and there is our first wallpaper ready to go, and as you can see, that dock is now completely invisible. Now let's get our dark mode wallpaper set up. As with my previous setup video, we're gonna be taking advantage of iOS 16's built-in focus mode functionality for this. And so to set it up, we'll open up our settings, come down and tap on focus, then tap to create a new focus mode. We'll tap on custom, then give our focus mode a name. So let's say dark as an example. I'm also gonna select this fire icon down here, which for some reason reminds me of a system dark mode. But with that done, I'll tap on next. Then I'll tap on customize focus. And from here, I'm gonna tap where it says people and change this to silence notifications from. Then I'll tap done and select apps and check that this is also set to silence notifications from, which it is. So I'll leave that as is and tap on done. Now we need to come down to this customize screen section. And all we need to do is tap on the lock screen page here on the left and then tap here to create a new lock screen. Then I'm gonna tap on photos, navigate over to albums and tap on recent. Then I'll tap my hillside evening wallpaper I saved earlier, pinch to zoom it out because iOS for some reason zoomed that one in, and then tap on add. We then need to tap on customize home screen and then as with before, I'll disable the blur option, then tap done. Now I need to come down to this smart activation section, tap on add schedule, then we'll tap on time here. And then I personally like mine to turn on at 9 p.m. and then off at 7 a.m. So I'll set those and then I'll hit done. Then we'll come down here to focus filters and tap to add a filter. We'll tap on this appearance filter down here and then leave that set to dark and tap on add. And that's it, our focus mode is set up and ready to go. So if we come back home and swipe into our control center, tap on focus and then tap on our newly created dark focus mode. Once we swipe back, you can see that our wallpaper changes automatically and our system dark theme has been set as well. How good is that? All right, now real quick, before we press on with the rest of the setup, I just wanted to thank today's video sponsor, Moft. If you're in the market for some top-notch phone or laptop accessories to pair up with your brand new home screen, then Moft has got you covered. From stunning vegan leather cases to these super fancy foldable stands for laptops, all of their products are incredible. But for me, their latest release, the Snap Stand Power Set, it's a total game changer. This is probably the best looking MagSafe compatible battery bank that you'll ever come across. And in fact, as far as I'm aware, it's actually the only MagSafe battery bank with a full leather design, making it ultra premium and giving it that nice soft touch. But then on top of that, it also comes with a snap-on stand that lets you prop up your phone in either a portrait or landscape orientation. 
And as if that wasn't already cool enough, it also comes with a MagSafe style USB-C cable that detaches and reattaches magnetically with an inbuilt LED light to go with. And for anyone using an Android phone or an older iPhone, then they also have adhesive based products, including this adhesive magnetic ring, which essentially makes any phone compatible with all of their MagSafe products. So make sure to check out Moff's entire lineup using the first link down in the description below. All right, from there, let's finish setting up these widgets. So whilst we've still got our dark focus mode active, let's long press our home screen here and swipe over to a blank page and take a screenshot. Then we'll swipe into our control center and disable this dark focus mode. Then we'll again long press our home screen, swipe over to a blank page again and take another screenshot. With that done, we can tap on this first clear spaces widget here and then tap to create a new clear spaces style. Then I'll tap on this light mode section and select our recently captured light wallpaper screenshot. Then I'll tap the dark mode section and select the recently captured dark wallpaper screenshot. And now I can come back, tap this tick icon. And then when we come back home, you can see that whilst our first widget here looks correct, our top right widget does not. So to fix this, we'll long press it, tap on edit, then select here where it says top left and change this to top right. Then when we close that, you can see it now looks perfect. Then we're gonna swipe on this top right widget stack here and long press it and then tap on edit shortcuts. Then I'll tap where it says mail and swipe down and select this blank shortcut down the bottom here, which is actually a shortcut I've set up to essentially manually trigger the system theme and dark focus mode to switch on or off. I'm not gonna explain in detail how to set this up as I've already shown this in a previous video, but as a quick guide, I will briefly walk you through the shortcut itself, which firstly has an action to get device details, which I've then set to current appearance. Then if it detects that the system dark theme is on, it'll turn the dark focus mode off, or otherwise, if it detects that the system dark theme is off, then it'll turn the dark focus mode on. And so if we come back home and activate that shortcut, you can see that everything does indeed switch accordingly and vice versa. If I tap it again, it reverts back to the system light theme. Very nice. All right, next we're gonna set up this large widget widget down here. And I mentioned at the start of this video that not only was this gonna be a slightly quicker setup to recreate, but that I was also gonna give you some freebie assets to get you started. And we're about to see both of those promises come to fruition. So after spending hours scrolling through the explore page within Widgie, I stumbled upon a couple of free widgets that I seriously loved the look of, but I just couldn't make all of them work on a single home screen because not only does the spacing go all out of whack thanks to iOS's limited spacing options on the home screen, but you also end up with multiple widget labels saying Widgie, which is not a clean look. And so I thought, hang on a sec, why don't I just combine the widgets I like into one large widget? And then that got the wheels in my head ticking along to where I realized why don't I also add my app icons into the one widget as well. And so that's exactly what I've done. And if you open the Widgie app on your own phone, come over to the create section and tap on import Widgie, then scan the QR code on screen right now, you will get this entire Widgie on your own phone straight away, icons included. Oh, and I've also left a link to the widget down in the description below in case the QR code doesn't work. Obviously, the main caveat with this though, is that if you wanna swap out any of the six icons, then you'll of course need to go ahead and pick up the full pack from our website, or of course, you can sub them out for your own icon images instead. But if these icons suit your needs, then happy days. But I'll quickly set this widget up myself now. So I'll tap on it, then tap on this one here. Then again, I'll need to add my light and dark wallpapers for the transparent effect to work. So I'll tap here and select the light wallpaper screenshot, then here and select the dark wallpaper screenshot. Then I'll tap the tick button, then select this bottom position and hit the tick again. Then I'll come back home and there we go. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that using tappable actions in Widgie is never as clean as just having app shortcuts on your home screen. So as you can see, if I tap on YouTube, it'll first open Widgie, then open up YouTube. And again, if I tap on Twitter, it'll do the same thing. So I'm guessing there's gonna be some of you who will probably not appreciate this slight jankiness, which is totally understandable. So you can always open up the Widgie app, come to the create tab and open up that imported widget. Then you can tap on edit or edit as a copy and you can simply hide this entire app icons group. 
I'm not going to do that for the time being though, but whilst we're here, if you do want to sub out any of the app icons and tap actions, then all you need to do is open this app icons group, then tap on any of the app icon images, come over to this images tab, tap on files and browse and find the new icon you'd like to sub in. Then you'll need to tap on the tap action above that, tap here where it says external action, and then browse and find the app you're looking for. Although if an app you're looking for is not on this list, then whilst you can set it up via this run shortcut option under this custom action section, keep in mind that that is an even jankier solution than it already is because it'll open up Widgie, then the shortcuts app, and then finally your app, which even for me is too many steps and not worth the hassle. So I suggest just selecting apps that are available within the Apple apps or third-party app section. But again, the options there in case you're desperate. But with that done, I'll tap this back arrow, then tap on confirm, and there we go. Our widget is set up. And so the final piece of the puzzle then is the folder icon down the bottom. And I've included this element partly to add even more functionality to the setup, but also to kind of counteract that janky experience of opening these six main apps here via the widget app. Plus, you can fill this folder with any amount of apps you like, therefore essentially increasing the functionality of this setup tenfold. So to set this folder up, we're gonna open up Icon Board or whichever app you wanna to use to create transparent icons. But if you're using Icon Board, then we're gonna to navigate to the Home Icons page and tap this plus button here to create a new screen. Then we'll select that screen and we're gonna first keep this background color set to solid, but change the color to white. Then we're gonna tap on icons, then on import from files, and then I'm just gonna to browse to my own vibrant icon pack, which I have saved on my phone. And I'm just gonna open up this folder here where I've moved all of the folder app icons I want for easy access. And for reference, I recommend selecting at least nine app icons for the cleanest look, but I'm gonna select all of these and then tap on open and then okay. Then I'll tap on back and then tap on install icons. Now, what I love about Icon Board and why I think it's worth the $13 premium upgrade price tag is because of how easy it makes this next installation process, which you're about to watch here. So I'll tap on save to camera roll, then on copy name. And if you're doing this for the very first time, then you'll need to tap here where it says install with new shortcut, which I'll do for the purposes of this video. And then we need to simply tap this open app action, tap where it says app and search for, and then select the app we're setting up, which for me will be the settings app. Then tap this drop down arrow here and rename the shortcut settings. Then tap the arrow again and select add to home screen. Then we'll tap the X icon here to remove the shortcut label, then tap the icon here and select choose photo. Then I'll select that recently saved settings icon, tap on choose and then tap on add. And then as you can see, our first folder app icon will then get automatically added to our home screen. Before we create our next icon though, we'll make sure to come back to the shortcuts application and tap on done to save that shortcut. But then what's amazing is that if you've already completed this process before and have all of your shortcuts set up, then icon board can actually use those to speed up the process. So let's tap next to come to the mail app. Then we'll again tap on save to camera roll and then copy name. But this time we're gonna tap install with shortcut mail. And that'll take me right into this custom shortcut that I've previously set up for the Gmail app. And all I need to do now is tap this drop down arrow, then on add to home screen. And again, repeat this process of removing the app label, tapping on this icon and selecting choose photo, then selecting that exported icon image, tapping on choose and then tapping on add. And there you go. That's now been added to my home screen as well. And so we just need to repeat this process for our other icons. So I'll come back into icon board once more, tap on next, then tap save to camera roll, then copy name, then tap on install with shortcut Spotify, then with the shortcuts app open, I'll again tap this drop down arrow, then on add to home screen, and again tap here to remove the app label, then I'll tap on this icon and select choose photo. Then I'll select that exported icon image and tap on choose, and then finally I can tap on add. And once I've repeated that process for all of my folder icons, I can then long press one of them, then tap all but one of my other icons, and then drag those eight icons onto the remaining icon to create a folder. Then I can drag that down into my dock, and there we go, our home screen setup is now complete. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that as of the making of this video, with the latest iOS updates, if you're using an iPhone that does not have this dynamic island cutout, then there is unfortunately no way to hide shortcut banners anymore. 
With the recent software update, Apple very frustratingly made all of our previous workarounds redundant, and I've spent hours trying to find a new solution to no avail. But the slightly good news is that you won't see them when opening apps via this widget widget, only when you open the custom folder apps. Oh, and thanks to the fact that none of our icons are wallpaper dependent, then the other great part about this setup is that it takes mere seconds to change the wallpaper. So you can make your setup look like this, or this, or even like this, as easy as you like. And so there you have it, a highly customized iOS home screen setup that as far as I'm concerned, is not only the best looking setup that I've made so far, but it's also by far the easiest to recreate. As always, you don't have to copy my setup exactly, but the goal of this video and all of my home screen setup tutorial videos is to give you the tools and assets needed to go ahead and start making your own custom setups. Links to everything mentioned throughout the video can be found down in the description below. But aside from that, if you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, then a sub to the channel would be greatly appreciated. But that's it. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you later.